The Ford government has been working to try and find a balance between providing proper education for children while still considering COVID safety restrictions in our province. Now joining us today is Minister Stephen Lecce to speak a bit more about what's happening with the education plans in Ontario. Minister Lecce, thanks very much for taking the time today. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. Now, I do understand that you spent some time earlier today uh, taking a virtual classroom tour with our local MPP, Norm Miller. Uh, can you tell me a bit about the purpose of that tour and, and what you learned from it? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a really neat experience joining Norm at the Perry Sound High School. Uh, very grateful to Mr. Cousins and Principal Buckland uh, for allowing us to see virtually the great work being done in the context of encouraging young people to pursue the skilled trades. The Ministry of Education funds a program called the Specialist High Skills Major Program. It encourages young people to get hands-on uh, education. In this case, it was hospitality and culinary uh, arts focused, trying to uh, graduate uh, future, uh, you know, future leaders in, in industry. And it really is a blended model of learning. You learn the theory, but you also apply it. And that's the mission we're on in this province to really encourage more young people to pursue the, the skilled trades. These are high paying jobs with dignity. And more importantly, there's a massive shortage, 100,000 shortages of shortage of jobs today. And that is only gonna get worse, James, as the baby boomers exit the workforce. So we really see a vision uh, to get young people good paying jobs. And it was awesome to see that firsthand on the ground uh, at the Prairie Sound uh, uh, high school and really some excited young people who said to us they this is their favorite uh, class in, in the year and i guess the goal for us is to expand it to offer it to more students in ontario fantastic well minister uh now recently we did hear some frustration from parents who were uh, having trouble utilizing the online learning for their children uh, instead of in class and the local school board made a last minute decision to shuffle their kids into new classes because the teacher's contract was up. Now they're saying uh, that this is causing some mental stress for their kids and they feel the school board is treating online classes um, with less regard versus the in physical in class. Um, and I'm sure this is not a scenario that's unique to Muskoka, but I'm just curious if you can tell us a bit about what the province is doing to help mitigate issues like this and provide more sustainability for online learning. Yeah, you know, in uh, in communities like uh, Simcoe Muskoka Catholic, they've got over $12 million more. The same is true for Near North District School Board, another $12 million in COVID funding to help with uh, safety, but also with the online learning elements. Um, and at, uh, you know, Nipissing Perry Sound Catholic, there's an additional $3 million. I guess the point is, in every school board in this province, without exception, they have been resourced with more funding because we think it's important that both the in-class and the online learning experience remain strong. And we want young people to know that irrespective of the choice they made, if they wanna stay home for whatever circumstance or they wanna go into school, that the system is gonna treat their education seriously with a high standard. And that's why we improved the professional development of our teachers. It's why we've funded nearly 200,000 laptops to, to be provided to families that needed 10,000 internet connections. Um, significant investment in the virtual schools and hundreds of principals to administer those schools. I mean, we've really stepped it up. There's no province in this nation that has uh, an online learning program like we do in Ontario. So I appreciate uh, that the choice is a strength, but also recognize that all of us have to continue to work together to refine it and improve it, uh, especially for those students that are learning online, making sure they get the full experience and the full access to supports, guidance counselors, mental health, uh, therapists, everyone within this, within uh, that you normally would have access to in the school. And that's something we're taking seriously and we really want to continue to improve the benefit of our students that are learning remotely. Uh, I know you're very busy, busy uh, Minister Lecheo, but I need I one more question I have for you and that's, uh, you know, that I know you're being hammered over the last year with criticism and, and harsh questions about decisions you've been making uh, in the education sector. Now, instead of going the route of asking more questions like that, I wanna ask you, you know, I'm sure you've received letters from parents and teachers with criticism and concern over how things have been handled in the school during the pandemic. And obviously, you know, it's a frustrating time for everyone. Uh, when you receive these letters and emails, how do your, the thoughts and feelings of these parents play into the decisions that you are making on a daily basis when it comes to dealing with these education matters? And, and are you really listening um, to what these parents and teachers are, are saying to you and your government? Well, I think, you know, the overall message I hear from, from parents and students is that they're grateful that we've ensured students can return to class. 
they're pleased with the decision to get students back into class, thankfully listening to the scientific experts. You know, had we listened respectfully to the teacher unions, we wouldn't have opened schools in February, we would have kept them closed, perhaps not even open them in September at all. You know, they've really been uh, urging us to keep them closed. And I just don't think that's in the interest of young people, it's in the interest of their development or mental health. So we took a very principled decision. Let's be cautious on the reopening. We've got to get reopened. We can do it safely. We've demonstrated in Ontario in uh, the fall. We can do it. We did do it uh, with a great level of success, recognizing this pandemic has created many challenges on the system. But the feedback I hear overwhelmingly is to make sure that we stand up for parents and for students in the system by keeping schools open and ensuring quality education. I mean, I face a great deal of opposition. If you listen to Twitter, you'd have a very different impression of uh, how the world is. But on the ground, I think students and I think parents especially were happy that for online learning, I set a very high standard. 75% of the day must be live learning. That was opposed by teacher unions. But again, the audience for that is a child. I want them to know that when you're home, sometimes not because you chose to be home, um, you're going to have a high standard of learning and you're going to have access to your educator, which I think is critical in, in the public education system. So I think for me, it's about reminding myself who I'm here to serve. It is our young people. It's giving them uh, access to a good job. It's giving them access to a modern curriculum that's going to allow them to succeed in life. And right now, you know, government uh, generally, ministry is often, you know, very, you uh, apprehensive of making changes because there's a lot of you know voices out there that can be loud uh, but i think at the end of the day my mission is to serve young people make sure that they're in the driver's seat of our decisions we listen to them we heard them on the importance of opening schools we heard them on the importance of adopting a new curriculum from grade one to eight that includes financial literacy and stem education and coding which we now do in this province i mean we heard them when we when we moved to a merit-based system of hiring teachers, right? We, we, we scrapped the seniority-based system where teachers were promoted singularly based on their seniority union, not based on their merit qualification or, or experience. So we're gonna very much uh, continue to do what's right. It may not be easy, but we're here to serve taxpayers and parents and the next generation are young people. We're very proud of them. They're doing great work in our schools. And um, I just appreciate the opportunity to listen to our young people as well as to our teachers and just let them know uh, that everything we do uh, is really designed to improve the student experience and keep them safe. Minister Lecce, uh, thank you very much for taking the time today. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Jake. Have a good night.